viewers and welcome to the March episode of NASCOM Insights Tech Bytes. We are back with a summary of key findings from our latest reports on the Indian tech sector. In addition, we will also cover a summary of the key discussions with technology industry experts presented on the NASCOM Insights channel in the previous month. And within our fact book segment, we will share significant events such as deals, contracts, partnerships, acquisitions in the Indian tech sector recently. Along with our analyst, we will also delve into some of the interesting reports that we have recent, re recently released. But before we call out the analyst, I will share some key findings from the report that all of you have been waiting for and the one that all of us wait to publish the most every year. Yes, it is the 33rd NASCOM annual strategic review that is considered the go-to insights document for the Indian tech sector. Given the uncertain macroeconomic environment and overall tech demand scenario, this year's edition focuses on the theme rewiring growth in the changing technology landscape. And this was launched at NTLF 2024. Three key findings from the report that I would like to talk about. First, that this was a year of muted growth. The global economic slowdown impacted tech spending. GDP growth reduced to 3.1% in 2023 as compared to 3.5% in 2022. Global tech annual contract value reduced by 6% in 2023. While we all know that the global tech funding dropped by 38% in 2023 over 2022. Now this had a ripple effect on the Indian tech industry growth. Revenues from the sector in FY 2024 is estimated to reach 253.9 billion, growing by 3.8% over FY 2023, while industry headcount is expected to reach 5.43 million, meaning an additional 60k net jobs, the lowest addition ever. However, there were several growth spots. The GCC sector continued on the growth path with 53 new GCCs opening up in 2023. The ERND sector drove almost 48% of incremental export revenues for the sector. The domestic tech market grew 1.8x faster than exports. Sectors such as manufacturing, emerging verticals, um, EMEA also grew above average. The big growth driver for this year though was AI. The Indian tech industry has grown AI investments and capabilities significantly this year which will prime them towards an accelerated growth path next year. More on that when we discuss our next report launch. Uh, the third point I want to cover is the outlook for FY 2025. As of now, it is optimistic. Our CXO surveys indicate three things. First, that enterprise tech spending is expected to increase in 2024 with renewed focus on digital spending. Secondly, India's tech industry sentiments have improved, uh, better revenue and hiring growth expected. And third, Key success factors for growth include ability to accelerate transition to AI-first organizations with focus on skills and IP. The good news for all of you is that the strategic review is a paid report, but we are running some never-before discount offers for this. In addition to your exclusive early bird offer for about 75% uh, off, we are also doing a giveaway with it, and that is a free copy of the 2023 NASCOM GCC landscape report worth 10,000 rupees. Offer is for a limited period only. The download link for the same are in the description box below. Now joining us for a discussion on key findings from our latest report with BCG uh, titled AI Powered Tech Services, a Roadmap for Future Ready Firms is Namita. Welcome to the Tech Byte show, Namita. Thank you, Achita. So Namita, what is this report all about? What does this cover? Sure. This report essentially addresses one pressing question. In the era of AI and Gen AI, is the Indian tech services industry, are our providers ready to ride the wave of AI and generative AI-led services transformation? So what we did was create a comprehensive six-dimensional framework along with BCG to evaluate the AI maturity landscape across India's tech ecosystem. Looking at the six dimensions of AI services portfolio for clients, vision and governance, operating model specific to AI, people, technology readiness, and uh, data readiness as the six dimensions. Through this, the report aims to illuminate the path taken by exemplars in the space to serve as learnings for the sector. Great. Um, uh, we all know that 2023 was the year of AI and India is now a leading global AI player. Uh, that's what I thought uh, were some of the things that you saw in the report. How is the Indian AI market growing? What kind of numbers do you see? Sure, and that's a uh, very important question. Uh, particularly when you put it in the perspective of how the global AI market is growing. Mm -hmm. 
AI is fast sharing its emerging tech tag, becoming very foundational and core to business growth. Mm -hmm. India's AI market, uh, as projected in the study, would be north of $17 billion by 2027. That's at a compounded annual growth rate of about 25 to 35%. What's interesting is that's very much in line with the global growth rates. So we are not to be left behind. What's fueling this? Really two things, two tailwinds, I would say. First and the foremost is the second highest installed talent capacity that we have in AI-specific skills. So there are about 420,000 AI-specific um, employees within the tech industry. The other thing is how the Indian tech providers are investing in AI. And that includes private investments, acquisitions, uh, acquiring minority stake in certain companies that are AI specialists. What we've seen as a very distinct move in the last year is that Indian tech services providers are investing a lot more in the domestic market, in building the capabilities within India. And that's very interesting for the organic growth of the AI market in India. Great. Uh, this is interesting, Amita, that this research also shows that the technology players, services players, Indian technology services players, are actually expanding their AI investments. Uh, but how is this tech services industry as a whole placed to leverage AI uh, not only for internal use but also for serving its clients? What does your research talk about the maturity of the industry in this regard? That's exactly uh, what was the purpose of the study with BCG. So when we took the six-dimensional framework to the industry, we surveyed and interviewed 85 plus of the largest organizations and the medium-sized organizations across tech services, BPM, uh, even the global capability centers, as well as the engineering services companies. And what we found were really three or four very interesting observations that uh, we probably wouldn't say exemplar because this is an evolving space, but companies who were really out there, progressive, and were able to scale their AI offerings. Three or four things that stood out. One was the tech services providers are developing a wide array of offerings, and that too in a very platformized format. So they're really, really applying automation, data analytics, bespoke and verticalized, verticalized solutions, all of these things together to come up with the right kind of offerings. Second, uh, Gen AI um, and the expansion of Gen AI in the overall AI portfolio is quite visible. But where exemplars shine is that they are able to very quickly build, test, and expand the POCs and take them to production. Third thing, um, leaders, uh, I would say, have been able to not only scale and build vertical expertise, but also build effective partnership models. Um, they've invested in building the right kind of uh, centers of excellences or AI labs, bring in the right kind of and also a diverse kind of um, uh, you know, capabilities to, to man those COEs, uh, not just technical, but also business side as well as legal, all of those aspects coming together, and the kind of ethical policies that they are mm -hmm. putting in place. And the fourth thing uh, really is what's driving this success very critically is their um, GTM strategy which is very account-based. Uh, it depends on the company and the account as to what kind of an AI portfolio is applicable. And leaders, I think, are very proactively evaluating that uh, to begin with. Talent upskilling is something that we've seen across the board, uh, as well as um, a very quick and responsive way of developing the AI agenda and fine-tuning the operating model. So all in all, I think um, very focused approach um, and a very agile approach to constantly adapt to the changing environment of AI and Gen AI. Thanks for sharing the insights, Namita. Viewers, there's a free report. The download link is below in the description box. Check it out. For our next report on how digital public infrastructure of India is actually accelerating India's digital inclusion, we have Vandana to discuss key findings from the report. Um, welcome to the show, Vandana. Thank you. Thanks, Achuta. Vandana, why was there a need for a DPI approach and how is this a groundbreaking framework as compared to, say, previous iterations? Uh, how did this entire partnership of government, private and other stakeholders come together? Sure. Uh, so, Achuta, in the pre-digitized era, so on the one side, we there was presence of the government and it had its internal applications and public systems. So, that led to innovation at its own pace. And on the other extreme end, we had the uh, private tech organizations where we had seen their emergence 
and who through their own apps and platforms and other operating systems so they had created sort of a walled garden and they were controlling the users access to network based uh, network uh, based content and they were providing access to only select applications so hence their need uh, you know there arose a need for this dif differentiated approach and this required not only the buy in from the government but also required the technological prowess which was promised by these tech giants so this dpi approach the government worked with the stakeholders and they created to design uh, interoperable dpis and this enabled other companies also to build their own solutions and helped uh, in the ecosystem solving the citizen centric problems so this dpi approach is built on a strong foundation of open source interoperability and trust and consent and this is represented by the three critical layers of uh, data payments and identity thanks vandana i think this is a very differentiated approach yes. that india has adopted and no wonder everybody is interested to know the story um uh, but you 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 uh, you also did a maturity analysis of dpis and you created a framework mm -hmm. uh, a model around how to yeah. uh, evaluate the maturity of indian dpis uh, in this report with arthur de little uh, what are some of the parameters that you considered in the report sure uh, so some parameters that we considered so the why we had done this uh, you know digit uh, maturity framework of the dpis was to categorize these dpis and assess how far on the maturity scales do they lie you know are they mature enough are they budding enough and there were various uh, you know parameters that we had considered so the first one was the recency you know that is the number of years since the dpis were launched and you know it also measures the period from when the citizens have availed the benefits as well uh, from these dpis then we have some indirect benefits you know the intangible benefits that the the citizens are getting from these dpis so these could include financial inclusion social inclusion some cost savings ecological impact as well then of course the main thing is the direct benefits what are the citizens getting so this includes the dollar value as well as the volume also generated uh, through the adoption of the dpis then we also have the total addressable market which is tam and this is the total population which is benefiting uh, from these dpis and of course we also not just saw the total addressable market we also saw saw the penetration and the reach as well so the users and the reach uh, of these dpis as a percentage of the tam so these parameters then were considered a basis which a maturity score was given to each dpi and hence then it showcased whether a particular dpi is mature or budding or what not Yeah. Right, and all this led you to estimate yeah. the impact of the DPIs on yes. the economy of India, yeah. and this is, I think, a first in the world kind of a report where the DPI impact uh, we are able to measure it to a certain extent. Uh, how much value addition has DPIs enabled for India in 2022, and how is the future going to look like, say, 2030? what were some of the use cases that you actually took into account while calculating the value addition impact of the dpis on the economy got it so you know for uh, understanding the value addition we had considered only the mature dpis of upi aadhar and fastag and we understood and we did the calculation if these three based on certain specific uh, use cases they have enabled a value creation of 31.8 billion dollars in 2022 and this was equivalent to 0.9% of the gdp so uh, of the 31.8 uh, out of this 14.7 was the direct impact and 17.1 was the indirect impact mm -hmm. so some use cases for these three particular dpis that we had used uh, you know for aadhar uh, aadhar we considered the direct benefits transfers and the authentication with respect to cost and time savings due to e kyc and of course financial inclusion because of the value generated by janthan yan uh, janthan yojana uh, accounts for upis we saw the cost of uh, cash transaction saved the float savings and also the value generated from the increased bank uh, bank balance as well and for fastag uh, it uh, it was the time savings and the pollution savings that was happening because of the use of fastag and in addition to this we also you know why in our research we also realized that over 30 countries uh, are either adopting or have are, or or already are in early discussions uh, to implement these dpis to solve their specific social and economic changes and uh, we have talked about 2022 now for 2030 the economic value add from these dpis has the potential to increase 3x 
So from 0.9, it is expected to grow to approximately 2.9 to 4.2 percent. And this is uh, driven by the evolution in the existing DPIs to deliver superior user experience and utilize the new age tech and also the enhanced DPIs of the budding uh, Euro DPIs, which are ABDM or ONDC among others. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for giving the highlights, Vandana. Viewers, this is a free report and the download link is below in the description box. Go check it out. Now, I'd like to welcome Khyati from our marketing team to provide a concise summary of our recent thought leadership sessions and explain why you should be watching them. Khyati, over to you. Thanks, Achyuta. So, we have recently published a couple of videos discussing our comprehensive report titled Future of Work, Unraveling the Intricacies of New Gen Work. The first video provides a breakdown of the report's key highlights, delving into topics such as the future of jobs, geographical expansion, hybrid work model, emerging jobs and technologies, emerging workforce dynamics, organizational DEI policies, gig economy, redesigning workspaces, culture of innovation and societal impact. In the second video, we hosted a fireside chat with Mr. Shashi Kumar, the head of sales at Indeed and Ms. Sangeeta Gupta, Senior Vice President from NASCOM. The discussion encompasses a range of trends including the evolution of jobs, workforce and workspaces. Oh, and viewers, do not forget to watch the digital ADDA session that NASCOM Insights partnered with NASCOM Future Skills. This focused on job opportunities in emerging technology hubs of India. You will find insights on emerging cities that are leveraging their core competencies to become a destination for a different type of service or industry and thus building their own unique brand. Thank you, Khati. Viewers, the links to the sessions are in the description box below. Go check them out. Okay, now let's move in quickly to the Factbook section where we have Prajwal who will walk us through some of the key happenings in the industry. Welcome to the show, Prajwal. Thanks, Sachita. So some significant technology collaborations includes Tata Alexi entered into a strategic partnership with Acunox for 5G managed security services for operators, offering them a comprehensive solution for building and securing autonomous networks. Ramco System Inc's partnership with BDO India to enhance and elevate payroll experience for businesses. They will jointly offer organizations a unified digital platform. Persistent Systems launched an innovative generative AI powered population health management solution, PHM, in collaboration with Microsoft using its Azure Open AI service. Happiest Minds partnered with SecureWorks to meet the growing customer needs for extended detection and response XDR services across the globe. Vipro and IBM expanded partnership to offer new AI services and support to clients. IBM and Vipro will establish a centralized tech hub to support joint clients in their AI pursuits. Next, we have some notable uh, technology contracts. Infosys signed a seven-year strategic collaboration with Musgrave. As part of this collaboration, Infosys will help automate Musgrave's IT operations by leveraging Infosys to pass. Indocom Industries entered into a partnership with Accenture to enhance business operations through tech. Accenture will support in standardizing, optimizing, and re-engineering various business processes for Indocom. LNT Technology Services and BlackBerry collaborate to offer suite of automotive technologies for SDVs. LTTS will leverage BlackBerry's QNX automotive solutions to enable SDVs for global OEMs. Uber signed an MOU with Open Network for Digital Commerce ONDC, to explore an integration with the network to expand the range of mobility offerings on the Uber app. Now delving into an acquisition for the current month, we have Tech Mahindra that acquired 100% stake in Orchid Cybertech a provider of customer experience solutions for $3.27 million. The acquisition is expected to facilitate incremental revenue opportunities. Thanks Prajwal for sharing the insights. Thanks Achyuta. Thank you for joining us today. You can find all our reports on the NASCOM community and in the NASCOM website. We have a variety of reports releasing in the upcoming month covering topics such as semiconductor sector GCCs, growth sectors for Indian tech services industry etc. Uh, so, to receive uh, instant notifications when we post new videos on our channel, be sure to click the bell icon and subscribe. If you found this video insightful, please share it with your friends and colleagues. We eagerly anticipate your feedback. See you next month.